All right, let's look at the practice equations and inequalities test. Uh, we're going to work through this. This is one of those where you're going to have to use this lesson well. Please use it well. Uh, we're going to work through them one by one. Compare your answers. Know how to do it. So let's look at problem one. It says, what's the solution to the equation below? So here we've got an equation. First step in equations, we're going to draw a line to separate the right and left. Well, that was a terrible line. Then we're going to look for what's being added or subtracted to the number with the variable. And we've got a negative 14, and the opposite of that is 14. So we add 14 to both sides. We've got to do, if you do it to one side of an equation, you've got it to the other. So this becomes 0. We bring down our 2x and our equals. 10 plus 14 is 24. Now we've got a coefficient, which is the number with the variable. We're going to divide by that number with the variable and the whole number. If this had included a negative, we'd want to bring that along too. But right now it's just a positive, so divide by 2. So we end up with x equals 24 divided by 2 is 12. So x equals 12. Go through the steps. Draw it there. All right, so number 2. Kaylin earns a 30% commission on all sales plus a base salary of $40,000. Her total income last year was 90000 which equation can be used to calculate Kaylin's total sales? So let's label the parts. So a 30% commission is 30% times sales, right? So 30% on all sales. We're going to make that an S because it's 30% times S or, because you can see down here it's already got 0.3, 30% um, in decimals. We move this decimal place. We got two zeros here, so one, two. We end up with 0.3. We can drop the the trailing zero because it means nothing, and we'll add s here, which is my s is always look terrible. Um, plus a base salary. This means this is the amount of money she gets no matter what. That's a fixed amount. Her total income last year was 90,000, so it equaled 90,000. Which equation can be used to calculate? Now we got all this. Literally, I'm looking at 40,000 plus. 0 0.3, whatever the variable is, they use x down here. So 0.3x equals 90,000. Well, this one works out real well. Uh, there's there's two that would work. Actually, there's only one that works. If you the 90,000 is crazy. If you look down here, we've got exactly what we labeled. We've got 40,000 plus 0.3x because that's what we got up there. I used an S up there. I'll use an X down here. Equals $90,000 total. And that happens to be answer A. All right. I'll move this up a little bit. Question number three. There are 50 actors in the school theater group. The actors want to raise $5,000 raise $5, for a trip to the state competition. The school agreed to contribute $1,000 towards the trip. Which inequality shows the amount of money that each actor needs to raise? So each actor is what we did. So... 50 is the actors, and they need to raise a certain amount of money. Uh, we're going to use X. So they, 50 actors each needs to raise a specific amount. The goal we want is we want at least. So at least we want, which is uh, the number we get will be greater than or equal to 5,000. And the school is going to throw in 1,000 up front. So what we've got here is 1,000 plus 50x, which is the money each actor needs to raise, needs to be greater than or equal to $5,000. Well, let's look down here. Well, greater than or equal to 5000 there's only two that work that way. Here we got 50x plus 1000 Here we got 100x. We already wrote up here. It doesn't matter which way they put it. They can put the 1000 first to 50 The answer is B. 50x plus 1000 which matches ours, is e or equal or greater than 5000 all right, number four. Which of the following is the solution to the inequality negative 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 11? I'm going to write this down over here because I need more room. Minus 4 greater than or equal to 11. Now, once I do that, I put my line straight down. I'm looking for whatever's being added to or subtracted from the number with the variable first, and that's negative 4. The opposite of that is positive 4. I add 4 to both sides. So I, this one goes away, I get negative 2x greater than equal to 11 plus 4 is 15. All right, I'm going to divide now. I'm going to divide by the coefficient, the number with the variable, and it's a negative 2. And because this is an inequality, when I divide by a negative number, I need to reverse the sign. That's the first thing i got to do there. Now over here, I'm going to divide by a negative 2. 
So I get x is less than or equal to negative 15 over 2. I could break that out, but you'll notice these are all fractions. So here x is less than or equal to negative 15 over 2. It happens to be a matches perfect. So we got that. All right, moving on. Number five. Remember, as you do this, you should be doing the problem, then checking the answer, not just letting it do. It's not going to help you to do that. So number five, which of the following values does not satisfy the inequality 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 2? This is really simple. Just plug them in. One of them will not work. Um, and we can solve it, and I'm going to solve it because I can. But I'm going to tell you, you could just plug in the answers. You could replace the x with these numbers and find out which one lies. But I'm going to solve it. So that's because I'm a math teacher. Plus 6 to both sides, the number being added, plus 6. So it brings down 2x less than or equal to 2 plus 6 is 8. Whoops, I forgot my x there. I divide by 2, which is the number with the variable, the coefficient. I get x less than or equal to 4. So any number that's greater than 4 is not going to match, and that's this one right here. And again, I could have plugged them in. I could have said, got down here, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 6 is 4, 4 is not less than or equal to 2. I could have said that one worked. All right, number 6. Bruce Brooklyn has 6 quarters and some nickels in her pocket. Some nickels. There's that something. So I know that's going to be my variable. The total value of the coins is $2.10. How many nickels does she have in her pocket? Okay, this is straight up. We know a nickel is 25 cents. And 6 times 25, 25 times 6 is 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 3 is 150. And we know that that's a 0.25, so i got to bring my 0.25. So 6 quarters is 150. $1.50 plus some nickels and each nickel is worth 0.05 cents because a nickel is five cents and that equals two dollars and ten cents once i lay that out all i got to do is do my math do my breakdown uh, take the number that's added with the variable and that's 150 i'm going to subtract one dollar and fifty cents from both sides that goes away i get 0.05 n equals $2.10 minus $1.50 equals 60 cents. Some of you already know the answer. So then I divide by the coefficient, the number with the variable, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and I get n equals, well, now let's do it. 60.6 .6 divided by 0 0.05. Because we can't divide by decimal, we're gonna move that decimal place two places. And if we do it on this side, we got to do it on this side. So now the decimal kind of goes away. 5 goes into 6 once. Bring down the 1, bring down the 0. 5 goes into 10 twice. She has 12 nickels. I could have figured this out. N equals 12 nickels. Yay, 12 nickels. All right, let's talk about Jillian's bank account. So Jillian has $650 in the bank. Every time she buys lunch, she spends $4. Write an inequality that Jillian can use to see how many times she can buy lunch and still have more than $350. So $350 has to be the minimum amount. She needs more than $350. She starts with $650. She buys lunch and spends $4. So $4 for every lunch. Uh, I'm going to use X. I thought about using L, but it so much looks like a 1, I'm going to leave it alone. So she starts out with $650. Whoops, can't write 650. Do you like my new star of the white pencil? $650. And she subtracts because she's spending money. She's spending $4. She subtracts four times lunch. And that, when she's done, it still has to equal more than $350. And there's my inequality. All right, so looking at the back side. Jaden bought a microwave oven and some pizzas for $175. The microwave cost $100. Each pizza cost $15. How many pizzas did Jaden purchase? So this is a, a solve the problem. I'm going to use the side of the paper over here. Uh, 
Total spent was $175. That's your equal. Pizzas cost $15. That's 15 times a pizza. The microwave cost $100. It's a flat fee. So $100 plus the cost of the pizzas plus 15p equals $175. This is a little scratch. I draw my line straight down. I subtract the number with the variable or the number being added to the number with the variable. It's 100, so 100 subtracted from both sides. So it's a little squishy in here. I apologize for that. So 15p equals 175 minus 100 is 75. I divide both sides by the coefficient or the number with the variable. That goes away. 75 divided by 15 is 5. So Jaden purchased 5 pizzas. So now our next one is another equation we're going to solve. I'm actually going to use the very bottom of this page, so I'm going to move down because there's a lot of room down here. So it says solve the equation, and I'm writing it down, and I'll show you in a moment. I'll just move down here. Solve the equation y equals mx plus b for m. So we want to get m by itself. Now, this is a little more. We're not playing with numbers. We're playing true algebra. But it works exactly the same. What we want is to end up with X or end up with M all by itself. So what we're going to do is the same thing we do. Since M is now our variable, that's what we're looking for. That's our variable. We're going to treat everything else like it was a number before. So because X is with the M, it plays that role of coefficient. We leave it alone. We deal with the addition subtraction first. And since we have plus B, oops, forgot my line, we're going to subtract B. So I subtract B, a B minus B goes away. I'm going to put these in order since I've got Y and I've got a negative B. I'm just going to write them as Y minus B equals MX. Now, if it was plain any other way, if this was numbers, I'd multiply by the coefficient. Since M is the variable, X is the coefficient. I'm not multiply. I divide by the coefficient because I'm multiplying here. I'm going to divide by X. And I'm going to divide both sides by X. So here it goes away. Over here, I don't have to do anything else. I just put y minus b. Oops, can't see, can you? Over x equals m. So that becomes my answer. y minus b over x equals m. I'll go ahead and write it up here. y minus b over x equals m. Don't let them out trick you. Remember, you don't have to solve it. They're all variables. All right, let's talk about Bryce's earnings. Bryce earns a salary of $3,000 per month plus a 9% commission on all her sales. She wants to earn at least $6,000 next month. Write an inequality that shows her total sales, and it must be, that must be in order for Bryce to reach her goal. Okay, so we're dealing with inequality. $3,000 is her base amount, so that's her starting amount, $3,000. Plus, she earns a 9% commission on sales. So we'll call that sales, which they're saying here it's S. Now, 9% is uh, 0.09. So 0 0.09 times sales. And that has to be at least. So it has to be greater than or equal to $6,000. Yep, the bell went off. People are going to come in and see me doing this. Isn't that special? All right. So let's look at number 11. What is the value of y that satisfies this equation below? So this one we can solve, and I'm going to solve it, but I'm also going to tell you, you could simply place these numbers in place of y and see which one worked. But I'm going to solve it because, well, I'm the math teacher. y over 2 plus 4 equals 12. Draw my line. Um, leave this alone. It's the number with the variable. I'm going to subtract the number here. So that goes away. 12 minus 4 is 8. And that equals, bring that y over 2 down, y over 2. Uh, right now I've got division going on. The opposite of division or the inverse is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by the denominator here. I'm basically flipping it upside down. So if it was 1y over 2, because it's a ninja, I'm flipping over to 2 over 1. And over here I'm going to multiply by 2. So this one, they cross divide out. 
I end up with y over 1, and anything over 1 is itself. 8 times 2 is 16. There's my answer. And I could have also got that just by simply plugging them in. I could have said 16 over 2 is 8, plus 4 is 12. Hi there. Lots of people watching me do this on the board. It'll amuse them. So which of the following ratios is not equivalent to 1 over 3? Now, 1 to 3 ratio, it's written like that. Remember, a ratio can be written like that. It can be written as, or it can be written as 1 divided by 3, or it can be written as 1 third. And that's really what we're looking for is this ratio. So which one of these, basically, which one simplifies to 1, does not? We're looking for not. 2 over 6, if I simplify it, it becomes 1 third. Whoops. 2 over 8, if I simplify it, it becomes 1 fourth. That's clearly not the one. 3 over 9, again, 1 third. 4 over 12, 1 third. So it was definitely B. All right, number 13. Rainy ran 3 miles in 20 minutes. What was her rate in miles per hour? So this is an old rate question. Um, and rate, what we need to do is, first of all, is decide what we're figuring out. I'm going to use the top of my page because I can. So we're looking for miles per hour. So we could fill in the sparks. So the miles was three. Now 20 minutes is not an hour, but it's a part of an hour. 20 minutes is 20 of 60 minutes total. So we can simplify that fraction. What's simplified? Well, I can get rid of the zeros because they both got zeros. Two over six is one third. So it be is three over one third hour. I can leave the fraction alone because it's written exactly the same. 3 over 1 divided by 1 over 3. Since you can't divide by a fraction, you've got to flip them. Remember, keep change, change, keep change, change. 3 over 1 times 3 over 1. And that equals 9. So she was running at 9 miles per hour. All right, let's look at number 14. So number 14 says there are six green cards and 11 purple cards in a deck of cards. If Landon randomly selects cards from a deck, what is the probability of purple card? All right, so probability, we need to look at the, the part over the whole. And the people in the room don't realize I'm recording, so they're talking. So now they're not. So part over whole, well, our whole, we got to add the total number of cards. We got six cards plus 11 cards, which is 17 cards. And we want to know if you randomly, what is the probability of be purple? Well, there's 11 purple. So the probability is 11 and 17. You could write that as 11 and 17. You could write it as 11 to 17. You could even figure out the fraction, but that's way too much work for me. All right, let's look at the very last one here. It says complete the number diagram and place the following numbers in their corresponding boxes. So we need to label the number diagram. We've been seeing this a lot. Uh, we know that the baseline is whole numbers. Whole numbers are counting numbers plus zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on and on and on. Above that is integers. Integers are all whole numbers and their opposites. It includes negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And last is rational numbers. Rational numbers are anything that can be written as a fraction. If you're dealing with decimals, it'll either be a terminating or repeating decimal. So now we've got this label, let's put it in. We got one third, that's a fraction. We're gonna stick it in this zone right here. We got one, that's a whole number. We got negative six, it's an integer. And we got point, 0 0.2, again, so that's a terminating decimal, so 0 0.2. So I hope that helped. Uh, please study for the test Monday.